Welcome back to the lab, folks. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to get a little bit into um, why, if you're just starting out electronics, that you need to learn to walk before you run. You get um, a lot of questions. You see them in some of the forums sometimes. Uh, for You get a newbie asking a question, the answer to which is rather complicated. Uh, they don't know what they don't know, unfortunately, and they ask a question and they get some very strange replies and sometimes they get a little bit upset and they may be discouraged that uh, people aren't giving them the answer uh, when it's, it's fairly obvious from the way they ask the question that they wouldn't understand the answer. Certain things in life you, you can roll right into and learn as you go. And I suppose you can do that with electronics as well if you're willing to take a little bit of um, you know, some of the rough road along the way. But I think it's a good idea to get a good grounding in the basics, uh, the theory behind the electronics. Thevenin's theory, Ohm's law, things like that are really important to understand. Uh, you know, how does, why does, how does a capacitor work? Why is it when you put two capacitors in series, the capacitance goes down? Little things like that seem to stump newbies. It seems to stump them and give them a lot of trouble when they go to try and take a big step. They're going in, they're going to build a, an amplifier, yet they don't know how resistors behave when you put them in parallel. And what happens when you put a 300 ohm resistor in parallel with a 120 ohm resistor? What, kind of, what do you get? How do resistor networks and capacitor networks and resistor capacitor networks and coils and all these things, how do they work? It's, it's important to understand. Now, to get this kind of knowledge, I mean, you could go to college, you could take a college course on it. I think that's probably one of the best ways to do it. But if you wanted to approach it from a self-study perspective, you could certainly get some books. And I'm going to show you some books um, that some I recommend and some I don't, and the kind of levels that they approach. But uh, there's other ways to do it too. Like there's, there's a couple of websites out there that's all about circuits. I'll put links to the sites down in the description. You can go to those sites and, and ask some questions, ask what books people suggest and stuff like that. And a lot of people will, you know, will come right out and say proudly, you know, get the art of electronics, you know, or something like that. But, you know, the, the art of electronics is it's a great textbook, but it expects that you know some of this stuff already. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a college level course. You should have taken something either in your physics or direct electronics in your past to be able to understand and make the, the best use out of that book. It'll get over your head very quickly. And there's even worse books than that. But uh, so uh, getting, getting some books, getting some basic study material, starting off with building simple projects. Now, I, I remember uh, back in the day, and this is one of my books that I first got, you know, to, to help me get into building circuits and stuff like that. However, by the time I got into this, I already had a, a good family. I knew what, you know, two resistors in parallel looked like or why capacitors in series or parallel changed their value and stuff like that. I knew how coils and transformers work, but um, you know, it, it's, books like this, at least you guide you through some of the stuff and there's some decent explanations. And unfortunately you can't get these anymore. And I don't know what the equivalents are these days, but there's gotta be stuff out there. You see that if you go into uh, Amazon and type in electronics or basic electronics or something like that, you come up with tons of different books that, that take you through or electronics projects. Um, it's a shame that these are no longer available. These, they were great. And, uh, you know, another source I, I get is, is, uh, is, is these handbooks that were produced by um, the manufacturers. This one by National. I, I have tons of them that go through the ICs and, and go through a, a bunch of the circuits that, uh, you know, applications and stuff like that. These are, these are invaluable. Again, I don't, I don't see them being produced anymore. You, you have to go to the manufacturer's websites and uh, go through, put in a device name and, and, and search for it and see what kind of documentation they'll have application notes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But again, that's, that's fairly advanced stuff. They expect you to know something. So how do you get this stuff? Well, yeah, I, you know, a, a friend of mine, he's got a son that wanted to get into electronics and he wanted, cause he wanted to dive right into Arduinos. And a friend of mine uh, ended up getting this book and he just gave it to me to have a look at. And then I said, yeah, well, it's, so this is a very basic book, the basic electronic guide for beginners. And it's, it's I don't know if they thought that the people would be uh, near blind or something like that, but these, you can read this across the room. And it is very, very basic. It doesn't, it goes into some things, but leaves other things out. And, uh, you know, yeah, I guess you got to be careful about uh, what books you pick up. And that's why I say going to, to some of the like, 
um, some of the websites, uh, even EV blog and stuff like that, that ask for what kind of books uh, you should start out with. But if you are a beginner, say that you are a complete beginner so that they can advise you properly, not somebody who's, uh, oh, well, I used to do electronics back in the past. I want to get back into it again. That kind of newbie is a different kind of newbie entirely. So, I mean, like it goes in, this book tells you things like how to read resistive values, how to, or, you know, what way to put a, a diode into a circuit, and what the symbols look like and how they basically behave and stuff like that. But it, it doesn't go into any real great detail about how these devices work. Uh, it certainly doesn't tell you how to bias a transistor or how to set up an operational amplifier as a, an integrator or anything like that. So. Again, it, it, it does, you know, it'd be great for the guy who just wants to be a monkey see, monkey do Arduino maker. Um, it'd be ideal for that. A more interesting book, or I shouldn't say interesting, but a more detailed book. And this book is definitely detailed. Um, it looks like this is, a, is Hogan Senior High School. I got this in a, in a local bookstore. I saw it in there for a couple of dollars and I picked it up. Uh, a few years back. I haven't really used it myself, but I, I just I thought it'd be a good reference if I wanted to get into some of the, the detail. This gets into terrific detail about all those things that I just discussed, about the basic theories behind electronics, and it goes into huge detail about them. Uh, I mean, it, this is obviously a two-year course, because you can see here that the students that signed it out, signed it out for two years at a time. This doesn't get into transistors or anything like that. Uh, it still, you know, goes through, it tells you how to use the basic instruments, it tells you how to measure stuff, what will happen if you have a network of resistors and capacitors and how to determine what the results are. So it gives you all the really basic knowledge, you know, electric power, what it is. It's got all the, all the important laws governing electronics in it as well. It goes into great detail in all of them. And, uh, you know, I would recommend this book if you could get it or a book like this. So this is this was a, 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 a senior high school level basic electronics course textbook. And something like this would be great to get to have around, even if you don't go through it page by page, but just to look stuff up. Like if you have a question about why capacitors in series are actually a, a lower value, uh, it, it kind of explains it in here. Going up from there, uh, if, if you do want to learn, you know, how to, to bias transistors and how to set up operational amplifier circuits. Both of these books here are are great for that. I mean these are these are like college level, maybe first year or second year level uh, textbooks. This is the one I had in, in university for my my uh, I think it was in second year when I started taking electronics. I was taking physics of course but I wanted to add electronics in as well. Um, and this is this is the famous art of electronics. They're both great books, but this is, this one here is a little bit more anecdotal. It's got a lot more in it to read through to get to what you want. You know, I I, I think it'd make a, a a good textbook if the professor of the course carefully selected elements out of it. But uh, it does have a, a little bit about the foundations in here, and so does this. I mean, this goes into it a little bit, it's, it's, but it's mostly like just uh, a review, like. And uh, this, but this one's very much more direct. There's there's less anecdotal stuff and there's less you know, kind of stories and stuff like that. It just gets right into how to do things. Now, both of these books can be very expensive, but I found that, you know, like if you go to uh, older editions of them, not much has changed. I mean, they, they may update them a little bit with more modern devices and stuff like that. Most of us don't really need that to get started in electronics, we, but we do need to understand the basics and the basics don't change. So, I mean, something like this, I think uh, I found it for as little as $15 for this edition. This is a very old edition. I think they're up to edition 10 now or something. I could be wrong. And then the, you know, these are great books. They can be expensive if you want the latest edition. They're well over $100, sometimes up to $200. This is my fourth year textbook. And it goes very heavily into theory. Like it go, kind of goes over the same stuff that was in the previous one I showed you, but uh, it goes into it very much more theoretical. It also has a lot more is to do with digital circuits and, and other ICs and, you know, gets into great detail of how operational amplifiers work and stuff like that. So yeah, lots of good information in here. And if you want to even go beyond that, um, you know, there's, there's books like this. 
this is a basically a physics text, but it goes into the, the, the physics theories that make electronics work. And this really does a, a this got a really nice treatment about capacitors in here. Um, and it, it shows you how capacitors are related to, um, you know, the, the charges that are brought into them, how the charge sits in the capacitor and what the capacitance means. And, you know, the initial units for capacitance, of course, were in, in centimeters because, you know, the value of a capacitor is basically the area of the plates divided by the distance between them. And so you you end up with centimeters as your uh, as your value for capacitance. Uh, but a centimeter of capacitance is tiny. This thing is seen better days. Is is really really tiny. And then you know Farad came by and decided he'd make up a, a unit called the Farad, and uh, it's really really big. I'll look it up and I'll put a, a little text box in it. It's actually what uh, how many centimeters there are in a Farad. It does have things like Ohm's law and it does have Thevenin's theorem in it and stuff like that, but it also gets into Maxwell's equations and uh, Green's theorem and stuff like that. I had to do this. I had to go through this book. As you can see, I went through it quite a bit. I th everybody should have to do this. So it gives you a great understanding. And then, you know, probably on the same level as that, but uh, more from an engineering um, point of view is this electronics engineer's handbook. Now, I actually got this before I went to university. And uh, it didn't make sense to me until after I had, you know, finished courses like this about some of the stuff they're talking about in here. But this gets into very much into electronics from the design engineer's perspective and some of the things that you have to look at in order to produce well behaved circuits. It's a great reference. I'll, I will give it that and I use it for that. If there's something that I don't know, if I hear something and I need to, I run up against something, I'll look it up in here and it'll be in here in great fascinating detail. But the, the dish of the story is, um, you know, what you're going to probably end up with uh, will, will, be, will be books like this. I mean, if this is what people are going to recommend. They're, great, they're both great books. I mean, I always recommend this one. I, I like it better than this. I'll turn to this one first, and I'll only go to this one if this doesn't explain to me uh, what I need to know. But like I say, it's a, it's a great book. And there, there's a, I saw it about a year or so ago. There was um, a uh, interview with Paul Horowitz on YouTube about that. Let's see if I can uh, find that too and link to that as well, where he talks about how this book was developed Paul Horowitz is not an electronics engineer. He's, he's a physicist. And so he, he was charged with, you know, teaching physicists electronics. And that's kind of what started the, the ball rolling on this. So a lot of it is his notes that he compiled over years of teaching the course. And, and they jammed it together to a book and added some other things to kind of stitch it together. And I think that's why it's a little, as far as I can see, a little bit out of orders the way the chapters go. That's it, folks. And, and one other thing I, I should mention, though, is, is when you do ask questions on some of the forums, especially forums like EV blog, where you get a lot of uh, professional engineers over there. And some of them seem to be a little bit cranky. Um, it's because what I mentioned earlier is that you, you may be asking a question at a level that tells, you know, the person who's trying to respond to it that you, you don't understand the basics. So it would be a great idea if you want to get a good response from places like that is to, you know, dig through a book, and try and find out as much of it as you can yourself. And there's all sorts of, just Google it. Google your question online and you get, you'll get back a whole bunch of uh, great information too. But anyway, yeah, learning a little bit of the theory is a wonderful way to make sure that your electronics is more rewarding and that you have less problems understanding what it is you're actually doing. So I always recommend that. That's why you see on, on my beginner's videos, I, I always do at least two parts to them. I'll get into the theory of what we're doing first. And even though I go through it very briefly, uh, it, at least it's a little bit uh, of theory. And you, you can't, we can't really do much in electronics without knowing some mathematics, some of the mathematical theory behind how the components work and how they interact together. Anyway, that's all I had to say about this today, folks. So I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, you know, do some electronics. Bye.